last time I stopped before I could introduce you to various magnetic interaction in solids and I promised you that uh, before we get into neutron diffraction for magnetic structures I will give you a brief introduction to at least some of the major magnetic interactions in solids and uh, direct exchange I discussed with you which comes from the we know that th I discussed it with respect to hydrogen like mo molecules so here if there is an atom A and atom B so it will be H2 but all I wanted to point out to you the direct exchange comes we will exchange electron 1 with electron 2 based on Pauli exclusion principle and you do get a G exchange term term which is given by the wave function of A with electron 1 or R1 I can say then wave function of atomic B with electron 2 VAB which is the interaction potential then psi a r2 I have exchanged now r1 and r2 psi b r1 this whole thing to be integrated over double volume integral and I mentioned to you earlier VAB is given by e square 1 upon sorry let me just clear it up a little bit VAB is equal to E square into 1 by R AB that is the distance between the nuclei plus 1 by R 1 2 between the two electrons minus between the nucleus and the electron minus this is the interaction potential this is purely Coulombic in nature but this exchange term comes due to Pauli exclusion principle where you can see that this in, in this integration I have kept VAB as I wrote here but I take it from a state where the things are exchanged and where the things are not exchanged and this comes because two electrons are identical particles this is the integral part making it a little confusing this is the integral part G exchange so the direct exchange it comes from overlap of electronic orbitals and we know that I talked to our earlier like it like uh, E2G orbital which looks like this if this is the Z direction XY plane then E2G looks somewhat like this E2G one of the E2G orbitals so this comes from overlap integral of these orbitals not exactly atomic orbitals uh, I mean not exactly S electron like orbital that I showed you so that is a direct exchange but there are several other exchange interactions like the next one is a super exchange interaction now in this case uh, it is not the direct overlap of the wave, wave functions of two neighboring atoms but here you can see this is needs an intermediate atoms so it is the next to nearest neighbors two manganese dz square orbitals they are interacting through an oxygen pz orbital so this is typically always uh, manganese for example manganese is a 3d4 element and uh, 3d4 means uh, i will just quickly remi remind you that 3d4 how to calculate the ground state of manganese so 3d4 is d is spd spd 
zero one two so there are five orbitals possible two three four five excuse my unequal size minus two minus one zero one two these are the orbitals now i have to put electrons in them four electrons so it goes to one here and i can put them parallelly which is favorable they will be far apart this is the fourth so now G l is equal to 2 plus 1 plus 0 plus minus 1 so l is equal to 2 2 plus 1 plus 0 plus minus 1 2 s is equal to there are four parallel electrons so 4 into half equal to 2 the orbital is less than half filled so j is equal to l minus s equal to 0 so now you can see because s equal to 2 there are five possible states but this is for the whole atom now not for one individual electron and then L equal to 2 that means SPD note this capital letter are right because this is for the whole atom D, and G is equal to 0 so it is a 5D0 for manganese and for this 5D0 manganese interacting through so is the DZ square orbitals and oxygen is a 2P oxygen is 8 electrons so 1S2 2P6 so it is interacting via 2P electron and you can see that if this is up spin then it will force it to become down this is by Pauli exclusion principle and this will force it down so it, mostly it favors antiferromagnetic order but that is in this case so for this 5d0 ground state so it is a through intermediate this gives an antiferromagnetic interaction between two next to nearest neighbor manganese magnetic atoms now the but there are actually a set of rules given by good enough Kanamori rules this problem was first targeted by pw anderson and later more successfully by good enough Kanamori. so it says that between two magnetic ions manganese in the previous slide which coupled through an intermediate non-magnetic ion which was oxygen 2 minus here so it was 2s2 2p6 two oxygens are going out two electrons have gone out so 2 minus the super exchange will be strongly antiferromagnetic which i showed you but there are rules regarding others the coupling between ion with filled orbital and one with a half filled orbital will be ferromagnetic the coupling between ion with either a half filled or filled orbital and one with a vacant orbital can be either ferromagnetic or antiferromagnetic but generally favors ferromagnetism these are known as good enough kanamori rules the derivations are beyond the scope of this course but what i wanted to say that so we discussed about direct exchange where two atomic orbitals overlap then we talked about super exchange where two magnetic ions are interacting through an intermediate non-magnetic ion which is oxygen so manganese oxide is a known antiferromagnet antiferromagnet means neighbors are parallel anti-parallelly aligned then there is something known as a double exchange now double exchange is similar to super exchange another form of super exchange very similar but i request you to note the fact that here i am putting mn3 plus that means three electrons have been taken out from the d4 so orbital so we have these t2g orbitals filled and one in the eg orbital energy wise they are split now in a crystal field next is that the other ion has a different vacancy valence, valence state which has got four electrons taken out so there is a vacancy here now 
this electron can hop from here to oxygen 2p state and hop to this vacant site and keep on hopping back and forth and now by using quantum mechanical techniques I can calculate this hopping parameter or the transfer integral and that will give rise to a double exchange. This was proposed by Zener in 1950s and this works specially in compounds not in elemental magnets compounds with mixed valence compound because you can see that I need two interacting ions which will have different valence, valence, valency. Now there is one more very interesting uh, this uh, interaction known as Ruderman Kittel Kasuya Yoshida interaction RKKY more commonly. Here the interaction between two magnetic sites is by polarizing conduction electrons. So it is the technique actually this interaction was uh, discovered when people discussed about or did not understand the nuclear lines and it is basically the one nuclear spin can polarize the nearby conduction electrons and that can further force another nuclear spin to align in some way. Here instead of nuclear spin we are talking about inner d electrons. So I will just uh, try to give you a pictorial representation of this interaction. Let us say this is the spin of a d, this is the spin magnetic moment of a combined d electrons. Now this will force the nearby conduction electrons to be oppositely aligned because of Pauli exclusion principle. And then another one magnetic ion since this is oppositely aligned to this, this will force it either depending on the oscillation of the, so, so now this spin density if I may say will oscillate between plus and minus, it will either give it a positive alignment or if this conduction electrons they go back to up spin near the next side then this will force them force it to antiferromagnetic ordering. This is actually many times it is used between magnetic defects in an otherwise crystalline lattice and this uh, interaction is known as R K K Y interaction where the intermediate inter intermediate conduction electrons conduction electrons they are responsible for this. I just show you a drawing here the indirect archaeoid magnetic interaction this has been taken from this paper where uh, it's a long range you can see so electron density of a system is given 2 10 to the power 11 per centimeter square and one impurity is fixed at y1 equal to 15 nanometer and the change in location of another impurity you can see this is in nanometers to 12 25 45 15 so basically first close to the first impurity the electrons are polarized. Now this polarization causes as we go further down opposite polarization of the conduction electrons. Then this opposite polarization in the next distance will force the electron to be again polarized up. This is simply because of Pauli exclusion principle and now you can see the polarization of the polarization of the electrons 
they have an oscillatory behavior. Depending on the polarization here, if a magnetic defect is situated at this point, then uh, this will be polarized opposite to the polarization of the electron and ultimately this defect or atomic or molecular site is forcing the alignment of another site which is quite far away. You can see this is the distance of the order of uh, 12, 25, 45 nanometers so 120 to 250 angstrom. So these are long range magnetic interaction known as RK co interaction where the intermediaries are the electron, the conduction electrons. So uh, one may say that these are dynamic uh, interaction using uh, electron spins close and away from one spin and then forcing the other spin to align ferromagnetically or antiferromagnetically uh, with respect to the first spin and often used for defects or impurities, magnetic impurities in solids. Uh, dipolar exchange interaction is another type of interaction which I mentioned in my transparency earlier. So it's basically the exchange interaction between two rotational, two pairs of rotational states of a molecule. Here this is what I shown here schematically is a potassium rubidium molecule. So rubidium that is. So here you can see that the one state is 0, 0. That means 0 means 1 is the total spin of the electrons in this molecule. It is 0 and the other state spin 1. The, so there is a 0, 0 state and also there is a if the principal quantum number is 1 then there can be 3 possible values minus then 1 it can be minus 1 0 1 it, this depends on the energy hierarchy of the spin 1 system so primarily I am talking about exchange between the 0 0 and 1 0, 1, 1, 1, minus 1 states of a molecule and again I can calculate the transfer integral and I can give you the energetic value of this double exchange integral. So here this is a dipolar spin exchange interaction of molecules in a little. So spin 0 to spin 1 and spin 1 to spin 0 this is the interaction in this case. The most interesting one is, uh, I have, this figure has been taken from this source. In case anybody is interested, you can look up the article because it has been determined using some technique known as Ramsey scattering, optical scattering because the difference of energy, there is a difference of energy involved in, in this interaction which is 2.2 gigahertz unlike other exchange interactions where we don't mention any energy term between the two states we are considering for exchange. This is the last one I am using. This is interesting because here so far in the exchange interaction I was writing SI dot SJ. It is SI cross SJ. So, here that means there is a cross product term and cross product term means you can see there will be a component between the two which is normal to this plane of this figure and most interestingly it gives a weakly ferromagnetic behavior in an antiferromagnet. I will try to give a vectorial diagram for this. Consider this an ideal antiferromagnet. Uh, antiferromagnet. Now if I can have some canting that means if I add an antiferromagnetic term to these two, ferromagnetic term to these two, a small ferromagnetic component coming from that cross product, 
then it looks like this now as I showed you see it goes this way it goes this way so this is one spin this is the other spin so that's why what is mentioned here that uh, in this exchange interaction it gives a weak ferromagnetism due to the cross product of the term and it's a source of weak ferromagnetism in an otherwise antiferromagnetic but this was very difficult to determine experimentally but now uh, without talking about this interaction I cannot really bring you up to date with the magnetic interaction listing because this this interaction is important for generation of magnetic skirmions now some of you may be aware but this is the latest order magnetic structures but at macroscopic length scale or mesoscopic length scale I just show you the schematic because I don't have the chance to give you the complete theory of it here the fact is that this cross product you see there is a this this dimension is almost a micron size I am giving you a uh, TEM photograph TEM image of this skirmions you can see in this one micron length so typically this size can be fractions of a micron it can go to uh, thousand angstroms also so this is a macroscopic to mesoscopic size objects and look at the spin canting so here the spin canting because of the cross terms you can see they keep turning and finally coming to parallel position at the boundary of this skirmion this is one skirmion now I must mention to you that this is beyond neutron diffraction or crystallographic neutron diffraction of a solid because the sizes are much larger but this can be investigated using small angle neutron scattering which will be a part of this module of diffraction but small angle takes place at a much larger or mesoscopic length scale and skirmions have been studied using small angle neutron scattering if I have time along with other problems in small angle neutron scattering I will try to introduce you to the studies on skirmions so this completes my promise of introducing you to the major magnetic exchange interactions so I talk to you about direct exchange super exchange through an intermediary double exchange I did not talk about indirect exchange interaction double exchange where you take about talk about two different valences of the same magnetic ion then RKKY interaction where interaction between two magnetic atoms possibly defects in a solid are caused due to polarization of conduction electrons and then Zialoshinsky Moria interaction which is a cross term of uh, SI and SJ to interacting spins and this gives rise to skirmions mostly due to loss of inversion symmetry at the interfaces of thin films you find skirmions in thin films I cannot give too much of theoretical details for all of them but I hope I have introduced you to most of the major magnetic exchange interaction uh, after this I will go over to magnetic neutron diffraction